who celebrate Chatsworth's 133rd birthday. And uh, I do appreciate you guys taking the time to do that. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. And as you can see by our background, we virtually placed ourselves in the museum so that we'd all feel like we were doing something a lot more fun. Um, we're going to go ahead and start. Let me share the screen here. And uh, a lot of you have seen this program before. So we're going to start out with this program. I've re reduced it down to just from 1888 to today because we go a lot further back in our Chatsworth history. But we're going to start here with our Chatsworth timeline that celebrates 133 years of Chatsworth history. And the sign that you're looking at in the program is was actually on the corner of Devonshire and Topanga in front of Chatsworth Park Elementary School in the 40s and 50s. And note that the Duke of Devonshire shield is shown on the sign in the center of the sign representing Chatsworth, England. And here we go. Now on March 10th, 1888, George Crow filed this map of a subdivision called Chatsworth Park with the LA County's Recorder's Office. Chatsworth Park was named after the Duke of Devonshire's estate, Chatsworth House in England. And Chatsworth was originally planned as a farming community with the land divided into 10 acre family plots. Only three roads were identified, Ben Porter Avenue as Chatsworth, Devonshire Avenue and Fernando Avenue, which is Lassen. Now, Ray loves maps, so he created this one and everything in the blue area was the original Chatsworth area, Chatsworth, City of Chatsworth or community. Chatsworth, Chatsworth Park. Chatsworth yeah. Park. And then the red area was the government land that was also part of the ex-mission San Fernando. And that government land is where our homesteaders went. And the blue area is where you could get your 10 acres. And we do have several programs, at least three, on our homesteaders that live down that government land and the history of them and their families. And we have been working hard to keep in touch with all the descendants of these homesteaders because it makes it more fun for them to know where they can come find their history. Dry wheat farming took place in our area <clears throat> before water was available. And of course the rain would come, the wheat would come up and with a little luck it could get a couple harvests out of it. And of course, uh, homesteader J.R. Williams farm crew, he made money helping everybody else harvest their, their um, wheat. But uh, before that, mostly everything was, um, what do we want to call it, uh, sheep and cattle range, and then it turned into golden wheat fields. Now we all know about our Chatsworth Park Elementary School, and it started out in 1890 called the Santa Susana School, it was changed in 1902. The current school is still located at the same location, the northwest corner of Devonshire and Topanga. The Santa Susana School District was created in 1879. The site of the first school, 1880, is not pictured. It was on the northwest corner of Topanga and Chatsworth Street. And just to point out the little girl in the <coughs> front row uh, with the dress, there's a little X on the bottom of her uh, dress, and that is Minnie Hill Palmer. That's right. Next to, next to right sort of behind the, the tiny little girl in front. Right. First okay. row. Okay. First row. Go ahead, Ray. Okay, the Chatsworth Hotel Inn, although it was built and very busy during the um, early movie uh, period, um, it wasn't torn down until 1958, and it is the site of today's Staybridge Suites off of Lassen, just north of the 1893 depot, the first depot. And here is the Chatsworth train depot. You'd, you'd think I know that this slide was coming. Anyway, it was located at the northeast corner of Marilla and Topanga. And this actually, this actual photo is part of a postcard collection that was done. It's an amazing set of postcards. We do have that as a program also, just to see all the postcards done that day and the people that were posed into those postcards. 
go ahead. Okay, I found this map somewhere and that shows, I was excited because it showed our railroad coming in from the bottom right, going across the valley all the way straight across and then straight up and then over to the quarry. And our Chatsworth Railroad came in 1893. That was the first sign of the railroad. <clears throat> I'm going to let Ray talk about this picture because there's so much in it, and uh, I'll go ahead, Ray. Okay, well, this is a, a photo looking north, um, and the train is uh, a little, the train tracks are a little north of today's Marilla Street, and the uh, road going up is Topanga Canyon Boulevard, or at that time was Santa Susana, and what is fascinating about this to me is that if you look from the train, uh, all the way north, there's really nothing there except for Stony Point, which is very recognizable. So there wasn't a lot, weren't a lot of buildings on the right. The building in the front is the Chatsworth Depot. The building behind the depot is the hotel. And you actually entered that from uh, Santa Susana Pass Road, and there was a long driveway uh, up to it. Us. And then um, one of our most fun landmarks is the Graves Hill. Mm -hmm. General Store, which is on the left, um, which is on today's corner of Lassen and uh, Topanga Canyon Boulevard, southwest corner. There you go. And the school is probably hiding right there. Well, that's right true. And the school is here. there. And it's hiding and of right, course, right there. Stony Point. I'm going to get the mouse out of the way. This is our iconic photo of Chatsworth. It's used to represent us a lot. Um, the it's on the corner of Lassen and Topanga, or what was Santa Susana Pass Road. The Graves and Hill General Store was on Topanga at Lassen from 1906 to 1915. They bought the store after the death of Mr. and Mrs. Jackson, the previous owners. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to find any information on the Jacksons, but we're still looking. Ray does all sorts of research all the time. Okay, the Gray family. <clears throat> They came in in 1898, and they, they actually bought the land a little earlier, but they built this stately home on Lassen, lining the street with olive tree cuttings from the San Fernando Mission. The home with 14 rooms cost $1,200, and it was built on 200 acres. The 24 by 24 central court, had, court entry had an 18-foot ceiling, well, they always put a big Christmas tree in the middle of it. It was the first home in the valley to have gas lights. I had to look up what the gas lights were. That was interesting. But uh, 76 olive trees on Lassen are an LA has historic cultural monument number 47. The 1903 Chatsworth Community Church is, was located on Topanga and it was moved, relocated to Oakwood Cemetery in 1965. That was actually how our Chatsworth Historical Society got involved and was created. Was formed, right. And it's LA Historic Cultural Monument number 14. It's a small number early back when uh, they were just starting. Now you can't think about Chatsworth without realizing we have our trains and our train tunnels. And it all started back in 1899, and this is a part of the grading crew. And they're out there with their shovels, and they're trying to make this perfectly graded for the, and the tracks haven't even gone in yet. There were three tunnels, and they were all completed in 1904. And we have a, uh, a complete, we have many presentations up on our website, chatsworthhistory.com. But the railroad one is, to, to me, one of the most fascinating because we have actual pictures that were taken by the people supervising the project, sending it up to Sacramento, uh, to Southern Pacific, uh, explaining the, uh, you know, the progress they made. And this is my favorite photo of, of these men basically just making the road flat and, you know, using horses and carts and shovels. So as it should be. Okay, we have a couple more slides on the railroad. Okay, working inside the tunnel, they had this large, I don't know what they call it. Um, anyway, it's three stories, 
And you can see on the bottom level, the uh, horse with the cart and a man standing in another cart where they're bringing stuff in and out. And there's a man standing on the second level and doing work. And up on the top, they're shoring up the uh, beams, the upper beams. So this is, they had a pretty clever method for doing all this. Go ahead. Do you want to? Sure. On, on a, how do I say this? Southern Pacific also uh, was involved with the Chatsworth Park Quarry. And a lot of people think we, uh, the train tunnels were uh, a part of the quarry and they were not. Uh, so there was a separate spur put in, uh, Ann talked about in the uh, map for 1893 uh, to start the quarry. And that was uh, to provide uh, stone for the breakwater in uh, San Pedro. Anyway, we've got some fascinating photos. We just recently in our next newsletter, we're gonna have another photo of this, but if you look here, uh, they've got some a derrick system um, and they were steam operated derricks, basically telephone poles with a lot of cables and pulleys on them. And we've got a, uh, a new picture that just came in from someone that, uh, that shows these even in more detail. But if you look sort of, maybe I can get it with the mouse. If you look right here, you can see here's here's a, a big set of rock tongs. Think of ice tongs that your grandmother used to have uh, to put the ice in the refrigerator. Here's some rock tongs picking up, you know, maybe a, a five or six hundred pound boulder. Um. All right, so we did have three schools on that corner. This was the second school. And about this time in the whole city, we, we were part of an L, um, LA City School District now, the, they built amazing schools everywhere. However, they used hollow core construction um, and they did not, which is the before, sort of like cinder block, but it was clay. And after the earthquake, which year was that earthquake? 33, 1933? Right. The Long, Long Beach, Beach earthquake. earthquake, they decided that they couldn't trust these buildings. So they tore them down. And in 1935, uh, they built our current school that's there, one story. And most of LA schools went to one story. Oh, this is a beautiful picture and uh, our Chatsworth Lake and Reservoir, which was part of Chatsworth at that time, uh, or still is. 1913 Los Angeles Aqueduct Opening Day celebration was November 5th, 1913. And in 1918, Chat the Chatsworth Reservoir is built and it is in service from 1919 to 1969. It was drained and expanded in 1969, but the 1971 Silmar earthquake resulted in the closure of this reservoir filled with an earthen, da earthen filled dam. Do you have anything else to say about no, it? No, it, it had water in it for 50 years and it's been dry for over 50 years now. The only water down there now is in the, um, the pool. The, yes. What is that called? I don't know, the nature preserve? Nature preserve, well, the nature well, the pool. the whole thing is, anyway. The, anyway, there's a small pool there for, yeah. um, for animals. All right, this is fun, and this is where we're hoping to go with our first presentation we can do at the Acre. Uh, we want to talk about the Twin Lakes Park, who had a Mayan, excuse me, Mayan Aztec theme. Then we know a lot about, we're going to include Deer Lake Highlands, which was north of Twin Lakes. And we've gotten some fantastic documents recently. We just received this document right here, which shows some of the literature from Deer Lake Highlands with the original Deer Lake Highlands in the 1926-27 yeah. <clears throat> time era. So, so that'll be our upcoming presentation. Uh, we keep getting new things. we get together again. So we'll That's see right. when that is. Go ahead. The Dosha Connolly gift shop. We um, have a dis our display in the museum right now is mo a lot of the Dosha Connolly items that have been donated by various people. And it had a huge history, which included uh, the, all the fig orchards that went around it. Um, but this was 1930s and uh, the tea room was a place to stop when you motored out to Chatsworth from anywhere in LA. It was a destination. 
Yes, a destination lunch oh. stop. And uh, uh, yeah, the Paradise gift shop was surrounded by those 10 acre parcels. Uh, a lot of them were put in as figs. And uh, and I, I don't know how many acres they had of figs. But I'm gonna have a whole nother presentation right. on that. This is one coming up, so. The Iverson Movie Ranch, always ongoing. We're look, always hearing more about various movies that were filmed. And this, of course, is iconic because this is uh, Grapes of Wrath. And this is that point where they came across the California border and wanted to, and we're hoping from coming from Oklahoma that there would be green grass and orchards and places for them to all work. And there you are, there's our Chatsworth with all those beautiful orchards down there ahead of them. Oh, and by the way, Stony Point. So we know it's Chatsworth. And if you do hike up the Garden of the Gods, if you uh, go up Red Mesa, you can park and it's a very short hike up to this viewpoint, which is still a fantastic view. And they actually have some camera mounts and rails still in the in the ground there. So you can imagine them panning across uh, the valley, uh, looking at uh, doing filming for various movies. Now our local, uh, act, like, what do I want to say? Our local landmarks. This one is um, a local historic cultural monument, number 645. It is on the the Huffman property. And you can see it as you drive down Devonshire from the elementary school heading towards the acre. And they take good care of this barn. It was the headquarters of the Palomino Horse Association of America. And it's referred to as Harvester Barn. And Harvester was the father of Mr. Ed, the talking horse, in a 1958, uh, 1966 TV series. And we have a difficult time explaining to the kids when they come to the acre and we talk about this. They haven't seen the show. They don't know what we're talking about, and uh, but the adults still do. We all remember it. So our our stories are sometimes limited to our audience. Sort of the same with Roy Rogers. We'll yeah. mention it to, <laughs> at the checkout counter at the, at Ralph's, and they'll go who? Yeah. <laughs> so our munch box is L.A. Historic Cultural Monument Number Seven Fifty. And it is a classic 1950s style hamburger stand built in 1956. It's still open every day except Sunday. And so put that on your list of places to visit. And we're delighted that it's still there and be, still being run by Buck. Yes. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> I just saw the other day a sign that says, uh, Chatsworth Junior Baseball League is accepting applications for uh, this season, which to me is a sign of spring. So they had their opening day in 1957 on Wilkins Field, which was located along Devonshire. It's the south side of Devonshire between Owen's Mouth and the Munch Box. And yeah. then they shortly moved a couple years after that over to their new, right. new facility. And this is a picture given to us uh, from Ken Ditto. Actually, Ken is up at plate there and he said the challenge with playing in this field is if you hit a foul ball uh into left field it would actually go onto Devonshire Street and roll down so you never wanted to park on Devonshire Street yeah you don't want to get hit by those foul balls <clears throat> oh and this is a fun program we have a program on this on the internet on chatsworthhistory.com uh, the Aqua Sierra Sportsman's Club in Roy Rogers Sports Center. It's located in today's Chatsworth Park South. By 1959, there were five skeet, I can say this, skeet and trap stations, a 90-foot high tower, one nine-hole golf course, a driving range, and two trout lakes. And we have a little bit of information on all of those in our program. In 1959, it's advertised as the Roy Rogers Sports Center. In 1961, three additional nine hole golf courses were added on the ad adjacent 48 acre Butler Homestead parcel. And so if we look, let me see with the mouse here, the Homestead acre is, is sort of here. And if you today walk into Chatsworth Park uh, South and walk along the edge of it here, the Southern edge, this uh, walkway is still here. Yeah, they didn't take the sidewalk out. It's a concrete sidewalk. And then participating, you'd stand here and shoot into the hills. And this is a 90-foot high tower where they would 
launch skeet from there and i'm not sure where you would shoot from but that was part of the part of the fun we found a video commercial uh, commercial yeah, we have it. Yeah. huh yeah. We, which is great and it's roy rogers advertising chevy trucks chevrolet i think so and um they, they talk about how they come out to the skeet range and they shoot and uh so it was great yeah we, go in go into youtube and type in uh, one word, Chatsworth History One, and you'll see all of our videos, and that video is up there in your spare time. Yes. Now, <clears throat> Roy we missed the Chatsworth Parade this year, but Roy and Dale were honorary mayors in 1958, and actually for several years during that time period, and they would make, a, make their presence known for us. The... Uh, Los Toros Mexican restaurant started in 1967 as one small area of that street and expanded in both directions until it pretty much took over most of that block. But it is, um, it is still there and it's been there a long time and it's sort of fun when we have a, we have a video later that when I take this out to the schools, the kids cheer when they see the landmarks that they recognize. And this is one of them. And the Munchbox. And the Munchbox. And the Cowboy and the Palace. Cowboy Palace. <clears throat> this building has existed since 1909 as the Alamo Garage with country music since 1971 as Giovanni's Rodeo Room. Rodeo Room. Names since then include Wild Bill's, Ryan's Roundup, R. JR's Cowboy Palace and now the Cowboy Palace Saloon. We're getting towards the end here. We're coming back to the Mini Hill Palmer Homestead. And uh, it is, of course, uh, Cultural Monument, Monument number 133 in 1974. The 1911 cottage built by the Hill family is of board and batten construction and replaced the original homestead structure built in 1886. The Virginia Watson Museum is also located at the Homestead Anchor. Tours, well, they're not available this month or next month, and we'll see which month we're available to open, but normally they're the first Sunday of each month from 1 to 4 p.m. Yeah, we're hopeful that we can uh, perhaps open up for uh, tours, monthly tours, on the first Sunday of the month, maybe in June or in July, the summer, we'll see, yeah. in the summer. We're, we're waiting. Now, we're going to move forward. This is just so that you know that you can find our programs on chatswithhistory.com and SlideShare. Um, well, go ahead, Ray. We have something special to show you. It's the Chatsworth song, and it's written and performed in 19... 1988 for the Chatsworth Centennial Celebration. There we go. Can you hear us?
Presents our presentation, and um, what can I say? Every time you look at it, it reminds you of all the fun things we've learned about and all the stories we've gotten to share about them. And 133 years that's pretty good. Thank you very much, both of you. And the museum looks beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, just to